Hey everyone, so today we're going to talk about how to edit images to use on your blog. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to take better images with your phone. Um, you don't really need like a super expensive digital camera um, to take you know, really great pictures to use on Instagram or for your blog images um, or for your Pinterest templates and so forth. You can take really great pictures. Um, I personally have an iPhone. Um, so I'm just going to show you some little hacks on how to take better images. And then for the images that you get that might not be the best, how to kind of edit them with some free software. So first, I am going to um, cast my screen here. And if my dog starts barking, three, four, two, we're just going to ignore her. And let's get rid of that and go away. All right, so here is my, um, this is my iPhone. So a couple of things. First, we're going to just get started with, let me turn all these sounds off our camera. So from your just regular camera, so you'll notice down here this, um, I'm still in the trial mode for this, so it's covering up what's at the very bottom of my screen. Um, so as we get to some areas, I'll kind of point to them, but they're going to be under this little image right here. So, all right, so my, my office here has kind of yellow lighting. Um, so I'm going to kind of open and so you see this purple flowers thing here still kind of drab so actually if you click up here um, in the top right corner there's the three little circles it's like a white gray and a darker gray if you click on that then down at the bottom you'll see this original so this is your standard um, filter or no filter actually for taking pictures so if you've ever seen pictures that I've posted on Facebook just like my regular like me and my daughter or me and my dogs and they always seem really bright people say wow you take really good pictures it's not me um, it's these filters here and so I go to the second one which is called vivid you can kind of see the difference right away it just adds a brightness to it um, now when you're in regular lighting like say outside or in a building that has like a lot of windows and the lights coming in. Um, this is the one I use when I'm taking pictures on Sunday at church with me and my friends or if I'm doing selfies and stuff like that. So right off the bat, you can simply take a better picture by using that vivid filter. And so the other thing, so we're gonna kind of get out of that. And so now if you tap on your screen, just tap it, you'll see that little box with the little dot on the side come up, right? So this can be used to either focus in on something, but it can also be used, if you scroll it, it can increase the light that's coming in. So if you're, it's not gonna do it so much in here because there is quite a bit of light, but let's say there's like just way too much light, you can actually take it down a notch. So if maybe you're outside in direct sun and there's just a shine on it that you can't get rid of, no matter where you stand, maybe try editing it with this. So literally just tap on it and then place your finger on the circle that pops up. It looks like a little sun and go up or go down, right? And so right there, automatically you can take some better pictures. So some of you have seen the flat lays that I've been doing that are on um, like a white, like the top of the table is solid white. And when I first take the picture, like we'll kind of come over here, um, which is not very dark. So I'm going to put this under here where it's a little darker. Pardon my floor here. And so if we do this up here, we can make this area a little brighter. So in trying to take flat lays, it is really important that you do it in natural lighting when you have that ability. Um, let me stop this so I don't make y'all dizzy. Um, so natural lighting is the best. So a window that the sun's not coming directly in um, or outside in the shade or something like that. Natural lighting is the best. You don't need to go buy a whole bunch of expensive um, lamps and lighting kits and all that stuff. I mean, you can, but natural lighting, the color spectrum in it is much better than what artificial lights can provide. All right. So now I'm going to this background here. 
So now let's come kind of hop over. So some pictures that maybe you've already taken. So these, just to show you, this is one that I took um, just as is, right? And then I took it on this one by using that scroll, like the little sun, and just scrolled it up a little. So this is, I'm standing in the exact same spot, but you can see the difference in the lighting. Um, I will tell you, doing it on a textured backdrop, so like this one looks like a wooden table, it's actually a vinyl prop, um, is much easier than solid white because solid white, it's hard to get all of the shading out, but I'm going to show you some tricks for that too. All right. So, well, let me go back to that. So even from here, you can, we'll go to the actual pictures. So let's go to my camera roll. Um, so from this one, this was the original one. So up in your top right corner of your screen, you're not going to see it on this view, but the top right corner of the picture in your photo album should say edit. So if you tab that, then you get the little, little wand thingy here. Now down at the bottom, and these are things you can't see, there's a crop. There's those three little circles again, and then there's this one here. So we're going to click on that one, and then it's going to have light color and black and white. So from here, let's click on light, and if you just scroll this over, right, it adds a little more lightness to it. Or if you had like a too much light on it to begin with, you can take it down as much as you need to. So we're going to cancel out. There's some other settings that you can do in here. In the edit mode, um, the different filters, you can add them after the fact. That's vivid right there. That's a vivid warm, so you want to add a little uh, kind of a brown tint to it. Um, blue. And so those are some different ways that you can just play around with the different images. And so these are these actually not just for like the images that you take yourself. Um, so if you found an image online and you kind of like went to it on your phone, like visited, you know, found that image on your phone, save it to your images and then bring it up like this as well. All right. So now another program I want to show you is this right here it's called snapseed and it is a free um, tool that you can use um, totally free so we're going to open this up and open from device let me go to my photo so this is where some of these ones that had like if you take let me find one here that's I take a lot of pictures, y'all. So let's maybe try this one. So in here, you see it has all this dark shading around the edge. So what we're going to do, you're going to click. Okay, there's two things. There's looks and there's tools. So first, we're going to click on looks. So these actually are some filters, the same as that you have on your regular camera. Um, so I'm just going to click on pop so it just kind of makes it a little brighter you can try each of these i like to do these after the fact so i'm going to x that out so now we're going to click on tools right here and then we're going to click on this selective so now what i'm going to do i'm going to start by tapping the screen right here and that little b is going to come up and then i'm going to take my finger and I'm going to drag this line across here. And you see, it's kind of making it white, right? And you can only go so far. So we'll hit the check mark. And then we're going to do it again. Now I'm going to get closer to the corner, right? And drag it out the rest of the way so all the images white is a really hard color to capture without any um, shadowing or anything else in it um, so this is a way to clean up the white space if you're trying to do a white backdrop um, for your flat lays so again we'll hit tools come over here to this corner do the same thing 
clean it up. And basically we'll do that all the way around. And then even here in like down here where the flowers and stuff are, I'm going to click in there. Get that out. You just kind of see. And if you wanted to, you could even go kind of in here. If it was like a really dark shading right there, you could do that as well. So now if you hold your finger to the screen, it actually you can move it and it highlights it to where the X, you can get it exactly where you need it. So let's say I wanted to get that shadow right there and then clean that up too. So now you have a picture with a whiter backdrop. So now if you wanted to go back over to the look filters and maybe do bright, that's too bright. Um, let's go back to pop. So that's kind of nice, clear, crisp. Um, and so you can do this. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to hit export. And then I'm going to hit export again, which is the very bottom one. And then it'll save it as a new image so that the original is still there. Uh, but it'll save a new image now to my camera roll. All right, so now we're going to open up another one. And this is one with more of a textured background. And so for this, basically, it's just going to clean it up a little. Um, so maybe up here, kind of brighten that. Maybe right there inside the flowers to make it a little brighter. And right in there. And so, then I'll come over here and I'll, I like pop. That just tends to be my go-to um, for that one. All right, so you can also do this um, with any other types of images. Um, if you have human images, so here's one I took of my daughter this morning. Um, she's heading off to teen uh, student camp for our church. Um, so you can simply add a filter, make it brighter right away. Um, you can go to tools. Now in here, you can kind of play around with each of these just to kind of see what they do. Um, so we've got grunge, just kind of adds that weird thing. And you can adjust here how grungy it looks. If you don't like it, just hit the X and it goes back to normal. Um, it's like a glamour glow to it different settings at the bottom. So there's just different ways to play around with your pictures. Um, so we could do some vintage with different glows on them. Um, so and again, this Snapseed is a completely free tool. So I highly recommend you, um, you know, download it to your phone, play around with it, start working with your images. I know everyone has always told me like, it's so hard to find certain types of images like lifestyle images, um, especially like ones of people of diverse backgrounds, different ethnicities, things that aren't so religious. So, you know, you're at church on Sunday, you're at the mall or you're just wherever you're with your friends, start taking some pictures and, and start, you know, learning the tricks with these little apps because these apps are free. Um, there are some that are paid, you know, for upgrades and stuff like that, but the most basic functions that you need to make really great pictures, like the things you see on Instagram, they are done by using these apps. So it's really, it doesn't take like this super crazy, I've been to photography school kind of person to make beautiful images. You just got to learn some of these hacks. All right. So now I am going to send myself this picture. So this is what I do. I edit them on my phone, then I go to Facebook, and I'm just going to do that one. And then you see it says only me. So that way, I save them to my Facebooks to myself. And then, so let me move this out of the way here. 
All right, so now I'm going to come over here to Facebook. I can go ahead and close that. And then open, open, open. And then I'll just right click and save these to my computer. I have a graphics file here somewhere. And let me do this one. And one more that I added the filter to. Okay. So now I can close out Facebook. All right. So now we're going to upload those pictures. These right here into Canva. Canva is so great. You can do so many things with it. I'm going to show you some tips that can help. If you're not the best at taking images or you find images online that just aren't the best but that's all you can find so we're going to direct oh so if you didn't know if you click on this it's just going to pop it in there and you have to resize it but if you literally drag it into your frame it's going to automatically fit to the size of uh, the background so now from here you can use this transparency to maybe fade it out so this helps when you have like a really dark image that maybe you found online. Um, actually, I'll pull up one from my file here. Images. So this one was pretty, but it was kind of dark. Drag that over in. So it's kind of dark. I mean, it is a pretty picture, but it's still dark. And we want to get away from the darkness. So you can first start with the transparency. So from here, you can literally just fade it out. Um, so that's one option. So if you have a lot of dark images, kind of picking a setting for the image itself. Um, another thing, click on the image, come over here to adjust. And it's going to go really slow because I need it to work. And then from here, you can adjust. So the three that I would focus most on are brightness, contrast, and saturation. So this brightness is the same thing we were doing with that little sun on your, on your camera screen, scrolling it up to make it lighter. This is kind of the same thing. So we're just going to, you can add more light to it. So like if we take this one back to 100. Um, I don't know why it's turning grainy all of a sudden. Something's wrong with Canva today, of course. Um, all right, so it looks like we're not going to get a Canva tutorial in today. So I'll have to save this one for another lesson when Canva decides it wants to act um, appropriately. And yeah, it's not responding now. So anyway, um, so those were just some helpful tips on taking better images. Um, you can see some of the ones that I've done here. Let me go back home. I had to close that other window. Um, doing your overlays like on this one and making your darkness like doing the transparency on the color overlay, not just the image itself. Um, here's some other ones. Here's one that I did to help uh, one of our students. And so I'm sure some of you have probably seen this. It came from Unsplash. And so the image itself is actually quite dark. So let's see if Canva will play nice. And so I have it at 45, but the original picture was quite dark, right? So I took it down to, see, just, just from going from that to that just makes it look a lot better. So I'm going to put it back to 45 there. And then creating the overlay. So even with your overlays, um, 
you can fade those as well. And so if we made it white, and then taking it down a notch, you know, to whatever works for you. Um, the one thing you don't want to do is this. Same image, right? This is very pretty, kind of, even though it's a darker image, it still reflects more light than doing it this way. And I've seen a lot of these in Pinterest feeds, and it just, hanging on to the promises of God. This doesn't look very promising, right? So that's where I say sometimes, like, the colors and imagery that you use often contradicts the words that you put on them. And so you want the words to match the background. And so taking the most darkest image that you find and adding color to it or adding these lighter filters, um, these saturations and things like that. Uh, let's see if we can get the filter to work in this. So brightness. So there we can make it even a little lighter. Contrast. Um, sometimes when I'm doing with white backgrounds, I use the contrast. And then the saturation. Um, let me come over here and show you one of these. So those are with lifestyle images. This is with white backgrounds. Um, so on here you can see I have adjusted my, so originally let's see, 14 and 33. So we're going to go back to 0 and 0, right? So I didn't edit these in Snapseed. Um, this, this one was actually made before I found Snapseed. Um, so you have all this shadowing and everything. So you can simply play with the bright, <coughs> excuse me, brightness and contrast. If you do it too much, it really lightens the picture and adds kind of like a sun halo over here on the left. So I took it to about 14, I think. And then here, the contrast will get rid of um, the rest of this right here. So you see it kind of fades out. And so now you have a, a really bright image. Um, same thing I did with these. Um, I've since learned to get most of the white out using Snapseed, and then I bring them in here and touch them up just a little bit from there. So, again, I just wanted to show you all some, some ways to really um, spruce up and brighten your images um, so that they really do on your blog, on Pinterest, um, anywhere that you're promoting your content, that it reflects the light that is Jesus, that it doesn't reflect darkness, that it doesn't reflect, you know, I, I don't know, we, we often associate dark uh, religion with darkness. People don't like the word religion, especially with the younger, uh, more millennial and even younger kids, the generation. I mean, I'm 46 and I don't like the word religion. And so it's really important that when we are branding our images, what we choose in colors and the actual images themselves really need to reflect what we're trying to say in the content that we're writing. Um, this one here, you can see, I just added, I took it down to 65. So that was the original image, not a bad image, but just by taking it down a notch, it just makes it look a little more... I guess brighter is the best way to put it. So I hope these tips were helpful. Um, if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment, um, reach out to me. I'd love to help you uh, figure out how to take more of your own images. Um, that way you're not always having to use the same images that everyone else has on their websites. So the more you can just learn how to take better pictures yourself when you're out and about with your friends or even of your kids or, you know, whatever your niche is, then you'll have some images that are truly unique to your blog and, and doesn't look like we bought them kind of at a mass produced place. So, all right, I will talk to everyone later. Bye-bye.